This is a uh, Trio uh, 9R slash 59DS communication receiver. Uh, not too sure exactly year of manufacture, so I'd say it's probably sort of probably the late 60s. Um, it's got a full uh, shortwave coverage from the end of the medium wave band all the way to 30 megahertz in um, five selector bands. Um, continuous wave and sideband reception capability. Um, obviously built-in fre uh, beat frequency oscillator. Um, built-in noise limiter, a very basic uh, diode that's put into the uh, audio stream or RF stream to, to block the uh, big spikes of energy and it basically a, a limiting circuit really um main tuning dial is here on the left hand side um uh signal strength meter in the middle and a, a band pass a band spread um tuning dial on the right which is basically a fine tuning control uh, and then you've got the rf gain and adjustment volume which they like to call af gain and the aerial trimmer which basically matches the uh the aerial to the front end of the set. Uh, at the moment, it's working okay. Um, I think I found what the problem is. Um, the set was working absolutely fine, and then it started to become very, almost like a lot of radio interference in the background on all the all the frequencies. It just became very, um, very noisy, very noisy. You couldn't hear anything really. Distorted sound, and then it went totally dead. Um, so I uh, took the, the base off it and had a look around. Um, and what I found was underneath... Let's move my clips and things out of the way. Underneath here, um, we had the wave change switch that runs to the, the length or the, 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 the length of the, uh, the radio. And you can see it here, it runs through, it does all the wave changes, which switches in all the different bands. These, these bands here, all these uh, gangs here are for the different wave changes, there's the um, matching padding capacitors and the tuning coils here. When I poked around on this um, Mylar capacitor here, um, the set burst into life. Um, so the first thing I thought was, oh maybe it's this capacitor's faulty, but looking at it, it's they usually split these capacitors. This one's in really good nick. Um, it's not anywhere where it's going to get hot. It hasn't got any voltage going through it. It's only on the uh, on the uh, front end of the uh, aerial section, so it's not going to have any uh, any high voltage going through it. Um, so I poked around around here, and straight away the set sort of went off again. So I've sprayed all these switch contacts now with a uh, contact cleaner, um, and the set hasn't caused a problem since then. Um, I've done a normal check as you'd expect to do. I've checked the uh, voltages on the uh, electrolytic. I'm not too sure what they are, but they all look within a sort of sensible figure. Um, most of the capacitors in this are all discs, so they're not going to cause any problems with um, uh, failures or anything like that. Cap disc caps are extremely reliable. As I say, it's these sort of like these domino type ones are uh, prone to being a bit unreliable, but only I think if they're exposed to a lot of heat. Um, it's a nice set actually. Um, it's certainly well made. Um, it's also got I see a jack in the back for remote control. Though I haven't experimented to see what that does yet, but I should think it's probably basic control of volume and things like that. Maybe volume and uh, maybe RF adjustments and things like RF um, attenuator adjustments. Let's turn it back over. And tune around and see see how we get on. Only a short aerial length of wire I've got on at the moment, um, but it seems to work fairly well. You might think the sound was very sort of dull and muffled. Well, that's basically because it's a communication receiver. They were designed to uh, give a very very narrow band pass um, on their IF strip. They're a very narrow IF strip. Um, which is what you want for a communication receiver. You're not interested in the sound quality. You're interested in picking out the uh, the weak signals between the really strong ones. Um, and that's why it sounds like this. There's no adjustable wire um, bandwidth adjustment. Um, that's It's fixed at uh, what sounds like about 600 kilohertz, which sounds very narrow. 
Um, but it seems to be working well. I'm just going to try and do a. This is, the, this is basically the medium wave band. I'm going to try and pick up some sideband reception. So I'm going to go to um, five and a half megs, which is um, around uh, Shannon Volmet and that area, just to see what the reception's like. Now, I'm not too familiar with how to tune this radio, but I've tuned it to five and a half megahertz there. Okay, here's a sideband reception, so I turn it to single sideband. A noisy pop there, actually. That need, that will need looking at. No, let's have a tune around. Okay, sorry, I get the hang of this in a minute. I'm tuning the band spread now. That seems to be working okay. This is our uh, Shannon Vomit. <laughs> working well. So it seems to be working absolutely fine at the moment. Um, I'll run it for a while to see how it goes, but um, I think what I'll do after I'll run it for a couple of hours and I'll uh, see if I can download a service manual and do an IOLF alignment on it and then I'll, uh, I'll have a look at tuning the front end up. But it certainly seems to be working fine, so uh, I hope you found this interesting. And uh, if there's any more updates on it, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll let you know.